Hey, this is Ian Detail. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my post fight analysis for UFC Fight Night 56. Overall, uh, you know, I, I wasn't too big on this card. It was just, you know what it was? It was a lot of the fighters looking pretty sloppy. I think one thing that showed in this card, a lot of the fighters were relatively new to the UFC. Maybe it's like their second, some of them their first fight, some of them their second, maybe their third fight in the UFC. And honestly, a lot of them look kind of sloppy, to be honest with you. Just Their inexperience really showed. I also think, uh, and they were saying in the commentary, that um, the heat really played a factor as well um, with this card. A, a lot of fighters just... Like I said, they just didn't look particularly great. Um, apparently, there's no air conditioning in the arena. Also, it was like super early in the morning or something. It was like 3 or 4 in the morning. So, th there's a lot of outside factors as well that may have made a lot of these fighters not appear very good. Uh, there was questionable judging, particularly in the Warley Alves versus Alan Jabon, Jabon fight. And the Claudio Enrique de Silva and uh, Leon Edwards fight. Uh, questionable judging there. Um, my picks, pretty good. 7 out of 10. Uh, the ones I missed are um, Diego Rivas versus Rodolfo Rubio, Juliana Lima versus Nina Ansaroff, and Claudio Enrique Silva versus uh, Leon Edwards. Picks. Um, or excuse me, bonuses. Uh, OSP and Leandro Silva got performance of the night, while Almeida versus Gorman got fight of the night. Uh, let's just get started. Ovint St. Prue defeated Mauricio Shogunhua by, well, it's, some are saying TKO. I thought it was a straight KO, 34 seconds in the first round. Not much to say here. I mean, it's... The thing with Shogun is that his decline has been steady. It has been noticeable. It has been steady for a while. He will, he has given us moments of hope against guys like James Tehuna where like the old Shogun's back. But the problem is even when he looks good, he looks bad in a sense. It's like Brandon Vera, you know, it's, he fights Brandon Vera, beats him in the fourth round, but it was a much closer fight than that had any right to be. Both were relatively gassed uh, by then, too. Um, I mean, he was on his way to beating Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson's just another one of those guys that's kind of on his decline as well. Um, his loss to Chel Sonnen was eye-opening, yet I you know, I mean, he lost by guillotine in the first round and just looked bad. Um, so, that's the thing with Shogun. It's just, I love the guy, pride never die and all that, but, and it's sad to see, but the fact of the matter is, even though he's 32 years old, he's only one year older than Ovin St. Prue. His body is like, that of a 50 year old or something I mean he's just had so many wars so much wear and tear and it's starting to show I mean granted a guy like OSP Dan Henderson's H-bombs knock out heavyweights you know granted that much chins don't get better though I mean if you get knocked out once and then you get knocked out again it doesn't get better you know it just gets worse and then, like I said, there, there's a steady decline. It's kind of a brawler, I mean, too, you know. It just, he throws it over and right, you know, and then OSP throws a pivot left hook, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, you're not, he's not getting, he's getting less technical and more brawler. And more of a brawler. That's and it's something I've noticed for a while with Shogun as well. Um, so you know, I'm not Shogun personally. You know, if he's thinking something like retirement, 
definitely should think about that. If not, maybe get some other aging veterans, like uh, a rematch against um, Antonio Rogério Nogueira next would be good. I hear that he has um, thoughts of cutting down to middleweight. Shogun's problem is not a size thing. That's the problem here. I mean, maybe you can say against like John Jones and Gustafson, he was definitely the smaller man. But overall, it's just his declining skills that's really costing him fights. OSP, I mean, uh, he calls out Anthony Parash and Fabio Maldonado. I think that was a joke. I kind of hope it was because he should lay waste to those guys pretty easily. Uh, he should probably get like Jimmy Manoa next, even though he's coming off a loss. Phil Davis wouldn't be the worst fight for him. No, Phil Davis is coming off the I went over to Glover Teixeira. Even Glover Teixeira versus OSP would work as well. Uh, so there's good fights for OSP. You know, the guy is not the most technically sound. He's very athletic. He can get by on his athleticism. He's not a terrible wrestler. He's a good enough striker, but man, does he do some really untechnical things that leaves him open. He hits hard. It's big for the weight class. He can win fights uh, against... Th there's noticeable guys that he can win fights against. I think guys like Bader and above probably beat OSP. Just more technical guys. Um, but other than that, you know, I think OSP can be a good amount of light heavyweights. And also, the division's not exactly the most um, stacked these days. It's actually, in my personal opinion, I think it might actually be the thinnest division in the UFC. Not as far as overall talent. As far as name value goes, there's a lot of name value. But um, as far as just overall talent and just skill level, fight, uh, fighters across the board in light heavyweight, I think it's actually one of the weaker divisions now. And it's also lacking prospects as well. Um, other than that, though, um, good one for OSB. Sad day for uh, Shogun fans, though. Next fight after that, Wally Alvarez defeated Alan Jabon by... I keep saying Jaban. I think it's Jaban. Uh, Jaban by, um, I said Jaban. Uh, by unanimous decision. Look, I picked Wally Alves, and even I don't think Wally Alves won this fight. I thought all the Alan Jaban, uh, Jaban should have, uh, got this, got the win here. Kenny Florian even went so far to say that Jaban. Javon was robbed and questioned if American fighters should even fight Brazilian fighters in Brazil because of this. I will say this though. I don't think it's a robbery. I, I, I really don't. Yes, I think that uh, I think that uh, Javon uh, uh, won the fight, but you know, it goes down to that second round. You know, Alves won the first, Javan won the third, so now it just goes to the second one. Alves did manage to get Javan to the ground and controlled him for a while. Um, one thing that I believe is uh, Zane Simon was saying um, in regards to this fight that probably swayed the judges was the fact that Javan's offense wasn't dynamic enough I guess is what I forgot what the words he used now but it's pretty much not it wasn't like uh, I guess the word is that ah jeez I forgot what he said something to the lines of like it wasn't dynamic enough to sway the judges in the sense to give jo Joban the, the rounds um after out the, the second round my bad the second round um after Alves controlled a majority round with top control. Um, so I guess, it, you know, just the sense of like, Joanne, he didn't do like these really obvious, like, 
I don't know if he really wobbled him. I know he got the better of the strikes in the second. I'm talking about the second round here. I don't know if he really wobbled him. He may have. Um, I know he got the better of the striking, but I don't think it was like. I guess the judge is obvious enough because nothing like huge happened. He didn't drop Alves, I guess. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, once again, I'm seeing it in the eyes of what I think the judges saw. So this is not not what I saw. <laughs> I thought Javan won the fight. <laughs> I'm just saying what I think the judges saw in the second round. Um, probably was a case of Alves getting top control. And while Javan was getting the better of the stand-up, it just, I guess to them, wasn't enough to really stake that second round. The third round, obviously, Javan got it. Alvarez got that first round. With that said, um, Wally Alvarez, he gassed out in that first round. Um... He also claimed groin shots and eye pokes constantly. That's a really bad sign for new prospects. He's only 23 years old. He's still a good prospect. Might have to put the brakes on him as a prospect, though. Once again, going back to fighters looking very inexperienced, Warley Alves, second fight in the UFC, maybe also the Heat, too. I mean, he just looked... He looked particularly bad. I mean, it, and granted, he was going Donkey Kong on Japan in the first round. And also was holding on to a guillotine longer than he probably should have. So, it's not the best. That's a very inexperienced thing for him to do. Um, nonetheless, I still think he's a good process. Probably one of the top prospects out there. Still a very good fighter. Very good on the ground. Has power on the feet. Um, but we'll have to see later on how much... Um, if this is just a one-time thing. If he's going to fight smarter next time. We'll see. He's still very inexperienced as far as fighting in the UFC goes. I think his record actually has a good amount of fights. Like I said, it's only his second fight at the highest level now. For Alan Japan, ah, uh, you know, tough for me to say. He's 31 years old. People still consider him a prospect. He hasn't been fighting for a long time. So he is a very good fighter. Um, I don't know what his ceiling is, though, because I can see him going a number of ways. Um, you know... He can just be an action fighter. I kind of lean towards him being a very good action fighter. Um, I, I have trouble seeing him as a top 10 guy. I don't know. I see his ceiling more of action fighter than top 10 guy personally. I think there's still a couple technical holes in his game. He's still far too hittable. Um, yeah. It, uh, but, um, tough to say. You know, like I said, he's still, he, age wise, you know, being a 31 year old prospect isn't the best thing in the, the Walter White division. He hasn't been fighting for very long. So, he could be getting better, but like I said, to me, I don't know. He, he can definitely take, I think there's really two avenues. He's either going to be like really rising up the ranks, or he's going to top off as an action fighter. I think he's going to top off as an action fighter, personally. We'll see moving forward. As far as Alvis goes, I, I despite... The fact that I don't think he won this fight. He's only 23. Trains at a good gym. Um, he's getting better. He's already pretty well rounded. Considering his age. Um, you know. I, I definitely see more of a pretty high ceiling for him. Next fight after that. Claudio 
Silva. I would say Henrique De Silva. Um, I'll just say call him Claudio Silva. Defeated Leon Edwards by split decision. I actually thought Leon Edwards should have got the win here, to be perfectly honest with you. However, Leon Edwards, uh, it's not a robbery by any stretch of imagination. It could have gone either way. He cost himself this fight. So that's the thing. He, here's why. Throw a flying knee at a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. <laughs> first, like the first strike he throw is a flying knee at a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at a guy whose sole aim is to take you down and keep you there. <laughs> Not smart. That's like Melvin Gillard, Jim Miller. You know, oh, so the flying knee. Oh, I got taken down. Got my back taken. Choked out. Yeah, it, it's just. Too high risk, low reward, inexperience right there too. Uh, the other problem with Edwards and something I noticed back in the regional scene is that he is just such a low volume striker. He throws so many single strikes and it hurts him. One thing that Claudio Silva has is toughness. This guy eats shots and just keeps going. He just he's just stuck on you like glue. So you have to keep working because Claudio Silva will keep working. No matter the thing with Claudio Silva is that as untechnical as this guy is in the stand up, I and mean, his stand up is terrible. I mean, honestly, it, it is just very odd looking. He's gonna be in your face like glue. He's gonna relentlessly go for takedowns. He's not even a great wrestler, but he just goes for takedowns. And once he has you down there, he is good at keeping you down there, and he's tough. That alone will get him wins. And a guy like Leon Edwards probably could have won if he had more volume in his strike and like put the stamp on it. I thought he should have got the one the win based on having more damage in two rounds. Um nonetheless. I think there's just a couple of strategic flaws that really cost Edwards. Another one is in the second round, I think he had Silva a bit on the ropes and, and he just kind of let him off the hook. He, he was just kind of stalking him, didn't throw anything. He landed some hard shots. Silva looked like he was kind of retreating, maybe hurt. Edwards didn't do anything. So, once again, he's still new, though. You know, he's only 23 years old. His takedown defense actually isn't too bad, even though he did get taken down. But he still needs a lot of work. And once again, it's a story of this card, really. Just this relative inexperience of these new fighters. Um, both guys, just more lower to mid-tier guys in the division. I mean, Claudio Silva is not a prospect by any stretch of imagination. Tough out though, man. This is the guy that no one should. If you're a U UFC newcomer or, or, or someone that's a, a bit of savage that wants to rise up the ranks, avoid Claudio Silva because this guy makes you look bad. You can be winning the fight and you, it's he makes just ugly fights. That's the thing. So he, he in that sense, he's a good gatekeeper. You know, that's the thing. With Edwards, still a prospect. Hopefully this is a good learning experience for him. I, I don't even think he was complaining about this uh, decision. I think he actually took it pretty well, uh, which is good, you know, um, which is very mature of him. And uh, you know, I can only see him getting better, but th there's holes in his game he needs to fix. Next fight after that, um, Diego Lima defeated Jorge Oliveira by unanimous decision. Once again, you know, the story of this fight, you know, second fight in the UFC for Diego Lima, dominated the fight when, and he fought smart in the sense that he didn't strike with Oliveira after just like, I think he got hit once and, and then he just went into full wrestler grappler mode. Smart. But it seems like he got frustrated. I mean, that knee he hit on, on Oliveira honestly looks blatant and I think that's inexperience on his point on his part 
He also made a lot of mistakes on the ground that prevented the finish. I mean, uh, you know, there's just certain little things I was noticing. Um, you know, when he's trying to get like a rear naked choke and whatnot um, that he could have done uh, to really get the finish on the ground. Once again, <laughs> Makes me wonder how much if the heat played the factor in here too, because it's affecting a lot of the guys' cardio. It looked like, um, but yeah, you know the thing is with Diego Lima, he's a good prospect. Um, when he got knocked out by Eddie Gordon, that was kind of telling. Um, I don't know if his ceiling is that high. He doesn't have too much, you know. He's still relatively inexperienced. You know, he's good everywhere, but, like, I don't... There's something missing in his game that makes me, like, wowed by him as a prospect at this point. I guess it's like he's not his brother in a sense, you know? Like, Diego's a good fighter, but when... When Douglas was in the same spot as, like, Diego was, Douglas was just, like, running through guys, you know? And just looking really good in, like, MFC... Except against uh, Jesse Juarez, you know. He kind of got a sub, like, late from his back. Um, and, you know, he went to Bellator and just... Now he's a champion, you know what I mean? It's just... The, you know, I hate to compare to brothers, but it's just... I don't see that... What Douglas has, I don't necessarily see it with Diego. It's just... I can't explain it too. He's good everywhere, but I, I think he's just missing. I guess the polish that Douglas had. That I, I think that's that's it. Um, he's missing that polish that Douglas had, which makes me not consider Diego like this like hot blue chip prospect. Um, and it's hard for me to see where his ceiling is. Nonetheless. Good win, fought a good strategy, dominated, which was good for Lima. Still made some mistakes. Um, once again, he's relatively inexperienced. But, uh, Oliveira is probably just going to move down to lightweight, and he looks like he'll probably just be a fun action fighter. Diego Lima, just more lower to mid tier guys of the division. Next fight after that, Juliana Lima defeated Nina Ansaroff by unanimous decision. I kind of, you know, I've read some reviews on this fight. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people like liked this fight and thought it was a good fight, and I thought it was a pretty sloppy fight, man. I, I kind of saw a good amount of laying prey actually from uh, Juliana Lima. Um, one thing about Lima, I mean, there aren't too many wrestlers I guess I mean she's not much of a wrestler though I mean but she definitely has more of a very grappling oriented game plan she doesn't go for those head and arm chokes uh, uh, excuse me head and arm throws that uh, a lot of uh, women mixed martial arts artists go for and they usually just get like reversed and like end up on the bottom because of it. Um, so that's good. That's the thing with uh, Juliana Lima. Stylistically, she's... I mean, I remember one fight in uh, Invicta FC. She's in a couple other fights. She's not the most aesthetically pleasing. She's kind of a grinder. There we go. She's kind of a grinder. I, I would say she's like the grinder of, of the women's strawweight division. And with that, though, she can get wins. Because there aren't... You know, I mean, yeah, she's not going to beat Claudia Gadalia. You know, I think she's lost her, actually. Not too sure. Probably not going to beat, like, an Esparza who's about to wrestle in her. Or someone that can defend takedowns really well, like Joanna J. I I can't pronounce her last name. You know, beat her up. But she'll beat the Nina Ansarovs, and she'll probably beat a couple of the female fighters out of the Ultimate Fighter 20 that can't defend her takedowns, you know? 
Um, with Ansaroff, I mean, she goes for a lot of spinning stuff. She does have power in her striking. I felt she was a little too content to stay on her back when she should have, you know. It, it, once again, it, it goes back to relative and experience. <laughs> this was Ansaroff's first run in the UFC. It's like, she'd go for arm bars and stuff on her back. It's like, dude, just get back to your feet. Don't throw submissions from your back, you know? Relative inexperience there, though, you know? Um, uh, there's a couple fights going on, though. Um, wait, no, they're, they're, the only one that's coming out is Kenlin Curran versus Paige Van Zandt. So I guess Lima could fight the winner of that one. Ansaroff can fight, fight like Tina Latamaki or the loser of Curran versus Van Zandt. Um, but by the time their next fight's announced, they'll probably have a good amount of fighters out of the Ultimate Fighter 20. Um, yeah, next month. Ultimate Fighter 20 finale is coming up next month. So there's a lot of uh, female fighters that they'll be able to, to get um, next. Uh, on to the prelims, uh, Diego Rivas defeated Rodolfo Rubio by unanimous decision. Once again, relative inexperience and sloppiness. This was a bad, this was not like a quote unquote, I know UFC quality means different things these days, you know, but I think there's a general idea of what UFC quality should be. This is not it. You know what I mean? This is just a sloppy fight. Stand up. They're not technical. S the scrambles on the ground. I mean, they get reversed super. Both these guys just get reversed super, super easily. You know? Um, you know? And just relatively s sloppy scrambles on the ground. Rivas, you know, he, he's the, he was the better wrestler. Um... Seemed like the better overall grappler than Rudolfo Rubio. I don't know if they keep Rudolfo Rubio. I mean, you know, Rivas stays in the FC just on the basis that he won <laughs> this fight. But you know, like, I don't see staying power <laughs> if they give these guys anyone decent. You know, in the UFC, like. Fighters that would be considered UFC quality will most likely beat these two. I think Virus at least has some upside. I didn't pick him to win, but he is young, uh, and he could be get better. I mean, uh, they should give him like another Ultimate Fighter China, Ultimate Fighter Latin America, just some pretty low level guy next. And if they keep Rubio, same thing. Next round of that, Kyle Magalas defeated Trevor Smith by knockout in the first round. Um, obviously, there's a, some controversy here with the back that punches from Magalas. Magalas. Uh, I always pronounce that wrong. But anyways, um, that's not a good look for him. However, this guy's actually not a bad middleweight prospect. <laughs> I'm not... I don't know, when he came into UFC, he got beat up by Buddy Roberts in the stand-up and looked lost in the stand-up. Um, he's pretty decent now, though. You know, he's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. His stand-up's getting a lot better. And he has some heavy strikes. This guy hits hard. I think he's a Nova Uno guy, too. Dragon Fight Nova Uno. That's where he trains out of. This guy, he's getting progressively better. Definitely one of those, like, dark horse prospects of the division. And he's still in his 20s. He doesn't have a lot of fights, too. So he's just getting better and better. And beating progressively better guys, too. Trevor Smith has managed to stay in the UFC a lot longer than I thought he would. I think he'll probably stay in the UFC uh, even after this fight. I don't see much future for him though. Um, he, he can be, uh, you know, even saying fun action fighter. I don't know if he can be that now. He is kind of brawling, so maybe that works. He actually has a decent ground game, 
didn't think he was going to beat Kaio here <laughs> at all. It just, um, I, I've noticed improvements from Kyle's um, stand up, and I know he has a really good ground game, too. Um, you know, I think uh, Michael, he, he should probably get a bit of bet, a step up in competition. I mean, he beat Luke, like Carlos Vamela, Luke Zachrich, and like Trevor Smith. Maybe he beat someone else that's in there as well, but he has a win streak over low level competition. Finished them too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he finished all of them too. So he needs to step up. You know, he needs the Ed Hermans, um, Derek Brunson's, um, Luke Barnett's. You know, like there's more mid level type guys now. Um, but Trevor Smith's just lower level guys for him. Next round is that Lando Silva defeated Charlie Brenneman by rear naked choke in the first round. Brenneman should get cut, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say. This guy get, he keeps getting he, he's finished in his last three fights uh, by Benil Daryush. Knocked out badly by Danny Castillo. And just got rear naked choked by Charlie Brenneman. Or uh, by Lando Silva. <laughs> His only method to win fights during the UFC is to like grind opponent, you know, take down and grind for like three rounds, and it's not even working anymore. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, you know, it was his second set for Brennan in the UFC, and he, he he's honestly just looked pretty bad. Actually, he's found out lightweight. This looks pretty bad to be very honest with you. Leandro Silva, I mean, big, hulking Brazilian. You know, I mean, he's got a good ground game. Uh, he's good when he takes it back. He apparently builds himself as a striker, apparently. Um, he's kind of surprised by that, actually. Because he's not like a high volume striker or anything like that, you know? I guess the most I can say is he stays in the UFC. Um, and he should just fight more like lower to mid tier guys of the division. Next one after that, Thomas Almeida defeated Tim Gorman by unanimous decision. Thomas Almeida coming in, hot prospect, blue chipper. After this fight, blue chip prospect. Um, there's still, once again, Story of the night. Relative and experience here, though. Gorman, for as untechnical as he may be, he threw a good jab, though, granted. He is tough as nails. And here's the thing. When Almeida couldn't knock him out, he's, the thing with Almeida is a strong combination puncher. His offense is really good. He throws in combination throws in volume, but his defense isn't very good. The other problem is with Almeida, he didn't seem to have anything else. It seemed like he had the left of the body, the knees, a couple good striking combinations. But, like... And I guess it was working, so it's not the worst thing in the world or anything like that, because it's still awesome to see. Um, but I, I gotta wonder if he needs a little more skills, may, maybe some more grappling. I don't know. It, it just... I, I There's a lot of tough guys in the UFC, you know. That's the thing. And as Almeida goes up the ladder, you know, there's going to have more Tim Gormans, but who are better. <laughs> that's the thing. Um, and that's why I'm saying that Almeida might need just a little more um, in his skill set to beat those t uh, type of guys. Nonetheless, I'm being pretty hard on Almeida here. Great prospect. I like what I see from the guy. His volume striking is awesome to watch. Um, you know, it's high volume. He's not a one punch knockout guy. 
Gorman's a tough guy. Um, he's two losses in a row, but he showed some good toughness here. It was fine on night two. Thinks he's probably going to stay. With Almeida, I'm curious to see his progression up the ranks. I know it's pretty hard on him, but nonetheless, I mean, he, he still has a lot of room for improvement. Um, there's more lower to mid tier guys in the division for him. And finally, Kobe Covington defeated Wagner Silva by Ray Naked Choke in the third round. This was a lot, you know, once again, maybe it's an inexperienced thing again. This was a lot, t uh, a lot tougher fight for Covington than I thought it'd be. Um, I thought that Covington would take him down at w Silva down at well, pound him out, maybe look for the submission. Granted, it's good he got it, you know. He, he was always looking for the finish, which is good. Instead of coasting. Um, I still like what I see from Covington. Um, I don't know if he has... You know, instead of improving, uh, his wrestling still his strongest suit. Or, yeah, his, still his strongest um, skill set, obviously. Uh, you know, he's just a guy still relatively inexperienced. Um, he's just going to get better and better, though. Smart lower to mid-tier guys in the division for him. For Silva, it's the second time he's lost. I think this he got finished by Abra as well, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. But Silva doesn't have a lot of experience. I don't, I don't even think he has like seven fights, to be honest with you. He probably needs some more seasoning in the regional scene. So that's uh, my post-fight analysis for UFC Fight Night 56. If you have any comments, just leave them below. That's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.